So is the UV5RH update to the venerable UV5R the next big thing? Let's take a look. I recently reviewed the UV5G Plus GMRS HT and found its ham brother available on AliExpress. It's the UV5RH. The UV5RH has a similar look and feel to the UV5R, but is bigger and comes with a nice color screen. It's still in the budget HT category, so you can find the UV5RH for under $30. But is there a catch? Well, yes. Stay tuned to find out. As we begin, welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. The UV5RH is available on AliExpress and is often the case there. You'll find more than one version. It's marked as a high power HT and has a nice color screen and a similar boxy appearance to the original UV5R. For those of you who are fairly new to this market, the UV5R was one of the first budget priced ham radios and as such has and continues to sell thousands if not millions of units. The UV5RH comes with the usual accessories and, as we'll see in a minute, has a USB-C charge cable, which means it's USB-C chargeable. The radio is a tri-band radio with the ability to transmit in the ham 2 meter, 1.25 meter, and 70 centimeter bands. It also includes an FM broadcast receiver and can receive aviation broadcasts in the airband frequencies of 108 to 137 megahertz. Oh, and it can also receive the NOAA weather broadcasts in the 160 megahertz range. As with several new releases in this category, the UV5RH also includes frequency and tone scanning functions as well as a stopwatch function. Let's take a look at what you'll get in the package. So here's the box that the UV5RH comes in. Let's take a look at what we'll find inside. Let's first start with the owner's manual or the user's manual and it's labeled as the BF5RH series and if you've looked at any other Baofeng radios before you're going to find that this user's manual is very similar to those other radios. Next, let's look at how we're going to charge the radio. First, it comes with a Type-C uh, USB cable, an A on one side and a Type-C here on the other. Uh, and that one will plug into the battery in the radio itself that I'll show you in just a minute. Plus, it comes with a charge cradle and the charge cradle is wired. You don't plug the wire into it. It's wired tight. It has the typical um, a recent Baofeng charge cradle with a little insert that is labeled UV5RH right down here on the bottom. So that's getting your radio powered up and ready to use. Here are a couple of things used to secure the radio. First, there's a lanyard that uh, connects to the radio. You can wrap this around your wrist and a belt clip. The screws for the belt clip are in the back of the radio where it attaches. As is often the case, the UV5RH comes with a wired earplug and uh, external push to talk button. This has got the K1 connector so it plugs into the side of your radio. The little push to talk button would be kind of down by your chest and then the earbud would fit in your ear with a little loop that fits over your ear which allows you to use the radio and not be quite as obtrusive or not bother other people who may be around you. The next thing we have is the dual band antenna. It's got the markings on the inside that gives its range. I mentioned that this is a tri-band radio. This is a dual band antenna for the 148 area and the 440 area. If you're going to use the 220, you're probably going to want to get a 220 or a third party tri-band antenna to work with the radio to get the best performance in that 220 band. So let's do a quick external tour of the radio. 
Uh, on the front, we've got the screen here. It's a nice large screen, about twice the size of the original UV5R. It's got the three typical control buttons, the VFO and MR or channel mode button here, the AB switching button here, and then this green uh, one-touch button that has a couple of special functions. The green button on this side is the enter into the menu mode. The red is the exit from menu mode, and then up and down buttons there to scroll through menu choices or to scroll through your channels. The keypad here have menu shortcuts printed on the keys along with the numbers one to zero. Uh, a star key, which doubles as a lock with a long press, and, this, and the pound key, which doubles as a scan with uh, a long press. And then the speaker is here, and the microphone is right over here. On this side, you've got side key number one. We're going to see that turns on the radio's uh, flashlight, programmable side key number two, and then the push to talk button right here. On the back of the radio, you have the battery. The battery connects uh, quite easily. Uh, it's got a little push button up here that will release the battery. Right down here, you've got the USB-C for the battery. A little door that goes open so you can charge your battery. And then right here, you've got a little LED that indicates its charge status. Here are the two screws for the belt clip. When we move over to this side, we've got the little rubber cover covering the K1 connector, which has got the microphone and speaker outputs that are doubled up in all these little radios, K1 connectors for the programming cable or like that little headset that came with the radio itself. On the top of the radio, we've got the antenna connector and it's an SMA, the male side is here. So if you look in there, you can see a little uh, spike that is the male side of this connector, the plug, uh, and then the large LED for the flashlight and then the on off and volume control is right there. So that's a tour of the exterior of the radio. Now, let's do a brief power on tour of the radio. So the radio comes up, you can see the nice color screen that we have here. I've got uh, area or register one in the 220 band and register two down here is in the 440 band. Uh, if we press the A and B button, you can see the main switches from up to lower. If we go from VFO to MR, you can see that the main band goes to channel mode. This has a different frequency and you can see there's a CTCSS code and the power set to high with these two little guys uh, there. It's on channel three. I go again, we can go back to frequency mode and then we can just enter frequencies with our keypad. And so if we press the, the one touch short key, you can see I'm going from 446 low to 222 high. So there's a swap function there and then a long press on this puts us into search. And so this allows us to search a frequency and a CTCSS code of a nearby radio. And you can change it from UHF, VHF, and the 200 range or the 1.25 meter range uh, to, to customize where you are searching. Click on the PTTs, takes us out of that mode. So in our menus, what we'll do is we just press the green key. Now we're in the menu mode. This is menu zero. I'm going to go down from zero to the upper menus. That's where some of the new stuff is. So menu 45 gives us the firmware version and the hardware version. Gives us our stopwatch function, power on password, reset, primary voice, uh, and, and those kind of thing. Power on message, whether it's the logo or voltage and that kind of thing. And the rest of these menus are very similar to the ones you've looked at before to include setting your frequency, saving it to a memory, deleting a memory, setting your CTS or DCS codes are all there in the memory and they work the same as all these other little Baofeng radios do. Now, if we press our orange key up here, you can see that it turns us into the FM radio mode. And so if I press the up button, I can just kind of scroll through or I can type in numbers like 99.9, .9, and that has a radio channel associated with it. I'm gonna turn that volume down to avoid any copyright problems with a YouTube. Uh, another short press uh, on this button will take us out of that. A long press on that button turns the flashlight on. You can see it flashing. Another long press turns the flashlight off. And then the lower side key here, if you press short on that, uh, and if you press short again, the light flashes, and then it turns off. 
and then a long press on that lower side key goes into monitor so you can see that the the display on that main section shows um, that all the squelch is off so those are our basic controls here on the front of the radio again very similar to what you're used to seeing on these small radios hey just a quick break to let you know that you can support the gadget talk channel by using buy me a coffee it's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make one-time donations or become members of the Gadget Talk community. Your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Now, back to our topic. Here's a quick listen to the audio quality you'll get from the UV5RH and power readings from the various bands and settings. UV5RH received test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, test out. Test, 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 transmit test, UV5RH, test, test, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, test out. So here we are with the UV5RH, and I'm on the VHF mode, and we're going to be reading this on the 20 watt arc there that's the second one from the bottom and we're in the vhf frequency range so here's the vhf call channel high power on the 20 watt arc looks to be about seven and a half watts seven and a half watts here let's lower the power so here we are on the mid power rating and uh, i've changed the arc down to the first arc five watt range on this power meter so let's see what we get in VHF so we've got 1.9 2 watts on the mid power setting now let's go down to the low power setting so here we are on low power the low arc and it looks like we got about 0 0.6 0 0.7 on low power on this UV 5 RH now let's transfer up to the UHF band. So here we are in the UHF range on high power. We'll switch this back to the 20 watt range and we'll see what we read on that second arc. Okay, between five and six watts, about five and a half watts on UHF. We'll go down to mid power. Here we are on mid power. Again, we'll swap down to the five watt range at this for this reading and we've got about 3.1 3.2 watts on mid and so now we're here on low power again on the low arc and it looks like we're reading right at one watt so that's the UHF power output so now we're in the 220 band or the 1.25 meter band in which this radio will also transmit I'm guessing that the power is pretty low here, so we'll see. We'll leave it on the 5 watt lower arc. Here is high power. About 2.4, almost 2.5 watts on high on 220. So here's medium power on 220. About 2.4, 2.5, not much of a difference there. Here's low power. So it looks like everything going out of the radio, regardless of power settings on 220, is right there at about 2.5 watts. So, a little tri-band radio with uh, the power settings you've just seen. As we got started, I mentioned that there was a catch, and now is the time to point out what for many should be a deal killer. To do that, let's take a quick look at the radio signal purity in the 2-meter band. One of the problems that we often find with these budget priced HTs coming from China is that signal purity is not in line with the FCC requirements. At this power level and at this frequency, the harmonic needs to be at least 40 dB below the fundamental, and the overall power of the harmonics need to be 25 microwatts. And so the little blue line in this display represents that 25 microwatts of power. So let's key up the UV5RH and see what things look like here 
and see if this is a pass. I'm using 146.52 and I'm on high power and I've got a 40 decibel uh, attenuator in line so I don't damage my tiny SA. Takes a minute to stabilize and it looks like it has stabilized and so we see that the fundamental is at 35 dBm so that's a reasonable power output. But then when we look at that first harmonic it's only 17 uh, dB below and it's well above that 25 microwatts. So uh, in terms of two meters in this uh, radio it's a fail. And that's unfortunate because this is a really cool little radio but if you're trying to be a responsible ham operator and operate within the guidelines set forth by the FCC this radio doesn't do it. That's one of the problems with dealing with uh, vendors like AliExpress. They sell the radios worldwide Worldwide requirements aren't the same, and because they normally don't have FCC registrations, you take a risk. As you see, the radio doesn't meet FCC requirements of the second harmonic and later being 40 dB below the fundamental frequency, nor is the harmonic's power level less than the 25 microwatts that's required. That same thing happened on the 1.25 meter band. The numbers were different, but the results were the same. So despite a good price point and solid feature set, the UV5RH gets a don't buy recommendation due to the signal purity. Frankly, I just don't get why manufacturers don't deal with this issue. It's not that hard as other radios in this same price category have clean signals. Baofeng itself manufactures several clean radios. With the cost of signal analyzers going from many hundreds of dollars for bench-level devices to about $50 for a pocket-sized version like the Tiny SA, manufacturers just can't hope no one will notice. My thought is that we as hams need to just stop buying non-compliant radios and, like I'm doing here, spread the word on what radios do and do not meet the standards. Okay, enough ranting. Thanks for hanging with me, and again, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Join me over here for a review of a nice Baofeng Budget HT that did pass the signal test. Thanks for watching, and 73.